We've talked about how to collect data, but what do you do with the data? How do you analyze your data and report a set of findings? So in this lecture 10, we are going to talk about qualitative methods of data analysis. It is not only simply quantitative methods of using data analysis in a systematic way using SPSs or whatever software to do statistical analysis, but even qualitative data needs a rigorous way of analysis. Otherwise, then there is uh, less reliability and validity that you report in your findings. There are basically four types of methods of data analysis when it comes to qualitative research. You have content analysis, you have thematic analysis, you have discourse analysis and narrative analysis. For want of time, we are basically going to look at two major methods of data analysis in this lecture, namely content analysis and thematic analysis. And with this, you can do wonders in qualitative data analysis. Discourse analysis and narrative analysis are more technical. You can read about them and as you progress in your research techniques, you would see when to use them. So let us talk about thematic analysis. Thematic analysis. Imagine you have conducted interviews, you have recorded the data, audio you recorded your data. Now you need textual data. Therefore, you need to transcribe the audio recorded data into verb, verbatim data, textual data. Once you have this textual data, you are ready for analysis. And believe me, one hour of recorded data when you transcribe is going into like 12, 15, 12 to 15 pages in single spacing. And so uh, some people say, I interviewed 100 people. It's impossible. When you interview five people, you're going to have about, let us say, 30 to 40 pages of text. And you have to do rigorous analysis going line by line. One way of going line by line is to go with an intention of finding repeated themes. Now, there are two methods of thematic analysis. One is pure inductive method of data analysis. Second is deductive inductive method of thematic analysis. What is pure inductive method of data analysis? If you did not have a theoretical framework, you are using what we call in qualitative methods grounded theory approach. Grounded theory approach is used in the absence of a theoretical framework to explain a phenomenon. There are uh, there are two basic authors, Glaser and Strauss, who came up with this method of data analysis called theoretical uh, grounded theory approach. What do, we, what do we do here? Normally, when you have a theoretical framework, you are looking at your data from the perspective of the theory. And in a way, th there is a cyclic process you are looking at the data from the perspective of the theory and the data is going to feed into your theory and that is what we will talk about. But in grounded theory approach, you have no theory to start with. So you have only the data and you're saying, can this data set generate a theory? Grounded theory approach. And so you're going to use pure induction here. Now, what is induction? Induction is a method of arriving at a general conclusion from individual cases, specific cases. Now, in our case, induction is from data to a theory. So, there are three steps involved in pure inductive thematic analysis. What the first method is what we call initial coding or open coding. You have your data set, transcribed interview. You go line by line looking for meaningful expressions, meaningful phrases, sentences that would feed answer to your research question. You highlight them, you name them, you code them, you give a theme, a sub-theme to them. Now, this is called initial coding. 
So it's a rigorous process. It takes time. And there are softwares like Envivo, iAtlas that are used. There are also free softwares that you could attempt with. But first method is to understand the process that is involved, even if you are helped by a software. So what is the process? You are going line by line, identifying phrases, expressions, sentences that could add answer to your research question. And you are giving names to them. Technically, you are coding them. Once you have done this initial coding, in a text of say 100 pages, you are going to have say 100 themes or more, but you can't report all of them. So in the second step, we do what we call axial coding. Axial coding is like you're tying up all the codes that you have come up with by highlighting the text. You're tying them, you're reducing them, you're grouping them into axis, you are creating a hub, you're creating a set of hubs to tie up these themes. And finally, the third step is when you are going to now identify the major themes that are emerging from the axial codes. So initial coding, axial, axial coding and thematic identification. Finally, you might report, let us say, five, seven themes and you explore those themes. You explain in your report those themes in your own words. Then you provide evidence from the actual verbatim inter interview data or focus group discussion data from your participants. Now, those are very vital. You can't say, this is what I, I found that my participants were saying. But you must give particular evidence from particular interviews even with the mistakes in English language, for example, that participants might be making, that uh, improves your reliability. Now, the second way of doing data analysis, in the case where you have started with a theoretical framework, is deductive, inductive, thematic analysis. Deduction. What is deduction? Deduction is the opposite of induction, where you have a general principle and you are applying that general principle or a theory to a particular specific instance or a case. So in this case, you have your data, but how are you going to look at the data from your theoretical perspective? That is where deduction comes. Now, in addition to the three steps that we have talked about in pure induction, you need a basic first step that you come up with a coding template based on your theory. So the first step is you develop a coding template based on your theory. Now using that in the second step, you start coding your data with that template. Now the template simply consists of phrases and expressions that you're going to foresee in the data based on your theory. And that is where the deduction comes. Now the inductive part of this method is that you are developing a set of coding template. You are doing coding, open coding, based on the template of this data. You are doing axial coding. You are summarizing the themes. So the, follow, the same methods. Now the fifth step is how do these new themes that are emerging from your data feeding into the existing theory? Does it challenge the theory? Does it improve the theory? Does it support the theory? And that is where that inductive process is involved. So these are two methods of doing data analysis using thematic analysis. A word about content analysis. In content analysis, you're not looking for themes, concepts. You're looking for specific expressions. So in content analysis, you do the same steps as in the case of thematic analysis. But what you're reporting is how many times does a particular expression appear? How many times does a particular phrase appear? And you are actually creating a table to show that this expression appears so many times in my data set. Now, based on that, you create a discussion Maybe because of this repeated expression, 
in this data set, this expression and the concept that it portrays is important to my participants. Now, this is content analysis. So, we have discussed basically two methods of qualitative data analysis. You just have to learn by doing.